In today's video, we are going to take a look at transforms and how we can move around this tree in the 3D space. Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Daniel aka Hashlips and welcome back to my channel. If you want to learn more about React 3 Fiber, I highly recommend watching this playlist from the start. In the previous video, we have cleaned up the code as well as imported our trees. In this video, I'm going to focus on this trees component and look at ways to use transforms, position it, rotate it and scale it. Before we adapt the code, let me explain in Blender what transforms are. I'm going to import this cube and then select it. On the right hand side, we have a transform panel. Transforms consist of location, X, Y and Z positions, rotation, which also carries an X, Y and Z, as well as scale, and again, X, Y and Z. Transforms are the parameters we set to tell the machine where to place our 3D object in the 3D space how to position it, how to rotate it, and how to scale it. For example, we can now position this cube on the X axis by increasing the X parameter either in positive or negative values. We can do the same with the Y and with the Z. Keep in mind in 3JS, the Y is actually the up vector. So it's almost like the Y and Z switches. But regardless, the rotation works the same. We can rotate in the X axis, the Y, as well as the Z. And that goes for the scale as well. We can scale in X, Y, as well as Z. Now that you understand that we can move an object, we can scale and rotate it, how do we implement that in code? Because this primitive will not allow for us to add this position. So, if we go to the documentation, we can see on 3JS, there's an object called Object 3D. The Object 3D is the base class for most objects in 3JS. And we can look at its properties. It has animations, cast shadow, children, and a lot of different ones. But most importantly, it has transforms. Here we can see it contains the position property. And the type of a position, rotation, and scale contains a vector 3D. Now, a vector 3D is something that you need to understand. And if we go to this description of a vector 3D, it's basically a transform that contains an X, Y, and Z value. So, what we can do now, with that knowledge in mind, we can instead return an object 3D, and then we take this primitive object that contains our model and place it in here. In our scene, nothing really changes because we have not set any properties on the object 3D. The primitive is now a child of this object 3D. So, if we now go ahead and give it a position, we know that we need to give it an X, Y, and Z value. On the X axis, I'm going to move it by 2, and I'm going to keep the Y to 0 and the Z to 0. When I save this and go back, we can see that the tree has moved up to the left hand side. If we wanted some kind of floating tree, we can then move the Y value. And now we have a floating tree in midair. We can now go ahead and do the same for rotation. Maybe giving it a 3 for the X a 3 for the Y, and 2 for the Z. Now, our tree is flipped sideways, and it's rotated. When it comes to the scale, we can implement it exactly the same, but it is advisable to go ahead and maybe scale it the same values. So if I do this and go back, we have a bigger tree. If I did not scale it the same values, and maybe left the Y to 0 0.5, we will have a squashed tree because it scales it in the Y axis. So let's go ahead and remove the scale because we know how to work with it and the default is fine, as well as the rotation. And for the position, I'm gonna turn the Y back to zero. Then let's do something interesting. 
Let's go ahead and place the object 3D inside here and duplicate this. I want to set the second tree. I want to set this to maybe be four. And then let's do one more and position this one at X position six. If I refresh this and go back to my scene, we will only see the last position of this tree. That is because the model.scene is a reference object. And as we position this, it moves it to the same position. Now what we need to do to solve this is actually clone the object. So we're going to clone each scene. And once we have done that, and we refresh, we should see all three trees. Now what happens if we wanted to rotate all these trees together? We will need to group them. And conveniently, we have a group object. So I'm going to group all of these trees, like so. And a group has position, rotation and scale. So we can maybe put a rotation on here, rotating the Y axis by four. If we save and go to our scene, we can see that the trees have now rotated in the Y uh, axis and all three of them have moved. That's because the positions of these objects now inside of the group is relative to the group's position, rotation and scale. One more thing, you can actually put the primitive directly inside the group as well. And that way you will get the same result as an object 3D. Instead, it's in the group directly. There's a lot more to transforms, especially if you look at rotation when you work with quaternions and how to understand how they work. But for now, these are the basics. And I do hope that you've enjoyed this video content and that you've learned something. If you did, give me a like, comment below and remember to subscribe because it does help this channel. And till next time, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers for now.